Return of the Jedi had some great moments. Some of the best in all of Star Wars. But it was the weak link in the original trilogy. And it's not just because of Ewoks. And I know a Gen Xer thinking Ewoks were too cutesy isn't groundbreaking. But keep in mind, I was seven when the original came out and 13 when Jedi came out. So by that point, I was into stuff like The Thing, Blade Runner, Alien. Not to mention horror movies, so I was getting a little too old for stuff like this. So George Lucas and his team had a choice when making Return of the Jedi. Do you aim for the kids who were seven when the original came out, who are now 13, or do you aim for the kids who just turned seven and are just getting into Star Wars? He went with the latter, and it turned out to be a good decision, I guess, because for the next 50 years, Star Wars became a rite of passage for every kid. So what went wrong with Return of the Jedi? Keep in mind, making movies is a collaborative effort, and some of the key collaborators who were involved with the first two movies were notoriously absent from the third. The first is Marsha Lucas, George's then wife. She was an editor on the original, and she had a big part in shaping the tone and the pacing of the first one. Gary Kurtz, the producer, was fired after Empire Strikes Back because it had gone so far over budget. So some people have said that Gary Kurtz believed the success of the original and Empire was because of the great story, where George Lucas thought it was more about the spectacle. Now, George Lucas is the guy who wrote the story, so he obviously knew it was important, but there's some debate that when Gary Kurtz left, he strayed away from story and focused more on the spectacle. Also, Lee Brackett, legendary screenwriter, helped on the script for Empire Strikes Back. She had sadly passed away, so wasn't a part of Return of the Jedi. And of course, Irving Kirshner, the director of Empire, was not involved in Return of the Jedi, and some say it's because he didn't like where the script was going. So think about some of the greatest moments in Return of the Jedi. The Rancor, the Sarlacc Pit, the speeder bike chase, the space battle, the battle in the forest, the final lightsaber duel. Most of them were all spectacle, but short on story and character, except for the final lightsaber duel, which had a ton of story and a ton of character and wrapped up the theme that was set in the first movie. But story and character both took a back seat in Jedi. All right, let's start with the character problems. At the end of Empire Strikes Back, Luke finds out Darth Vader is his father. No, I am the father. This is the most important thing in his life and the most pivotal point of the story. There is no way that Luke would not have told Leia what had just happened. I'm thinking, right here, he's gonna say, yeah, yeah, they'll get Han. Now set your princess tush down, cause I got a bombshell to drop. Then he would have hopped in his X-Wing, gone to Dagobah, and said to Yoda, what the hell, man, you didn't tell me Darth was my father? Instead, Return of the Jedi starts, it's about a year later, Luke claims to be a Jedi. I'm Luke Skywalker. Jedi Knight and friend to Captain Solo. His skills have improved. He's force choking these guards, so we assume he's been trained by Yoda. But then after the sequence, he goes to see Yoda for what looks like the first time. And this is when he asks Yoda if Darth Vader's really his father. Is Darth Vader my father? Seriously? He waited until now? What's up with that? What's up with that? So the way I say this, two ways they could have gotten this information out. One is they could start the way they did, show a passage in time, Luke's a little older, a little more skilled, do the job of the Hut Palace sequence with some changes I'll get to in a minute. And then once they get Han out, they could explain Luke's been training with Yoda, Darth Vader's his father, you could have Luke do it, you could have Leia do it, but you can't just pretend it didn't happen. Or there's a much better way, but first let's talk about the job of the Hut Palace sequence and what's wrong with it. The problem is, they have a terrible plan. First, Luke gives up the droids. I present to you a gift. These two droids. What did he say? Now keep in mind, this is a world where people regularly wipe their droids' memories. Tomorrow I want you to take that R2 unit to anchor head and have its memory erased. 
So let's say Luke hides his lightsaber in R2-D2 and Jabba wipes his memory, or destroys him, or sells him for parts, or just doesn't station him where Luke needs him to be at the right moment. It's a bad plan and now you don't have your lightsaber. Plus, he didn't need to sneak his lightsaber in. He's not going through airport security. The second dumb mistake, giving up Chewie. Okay, great. You got Chewie in, he's your strongest asset, but now he's in handcuffs in a jail cell. This plan makes no sense. And then there's this. Okay, this is high risk, zero reward. Why would she do this? She's undercover as a bounty hunter. Why would she draw extra attention to herself? Besides, if this had gone down, I think Jabba would have said this. And then Bib Fortuna would have given Boba Fett a knowing nod. Boba would have shot her in the back and then they would have put her head on a spike as a warning to everyone not to pull a thermal detonator on Jabba the freaking hut. So they have a really bad plan. It works, but not because it should. It just works because they're the main characters and it has to work. But it doesn't reveal any character and it's just stupid. So here's a better way to do it. Let's start the movie with Luke on Dagobah being trained by Yoda. We could see him make his new lightsaber. We could see him using the force to levitate his X-Wing, you know, the thing he couldn't do in the last movie, so this shows growth. And then the Millennium Falcon pulls up. Leia gets out of the Falcon. Luke says, you found him. And she says, we found him, which is a nice little callback to Empire. Good morning. Nice of you guys to drop by. Echo Base, this is Rogue Two. I found them. Repeat, I found them. So, Luke wants to leave to go rescue Han. Yoda doesn't want him to and reminds him what happened last time, in which case Luke reminds him, you mean when you didn't tell me Darth Vader was my father? What's up with that? What's up with that? So now the audience has confirmation that Darth Vader is indeed his father. But we see that he hasn't just brushed this aside. This is still the most important thing in his life and he's got to deal with this. So at Jabba's palace, things should go wrong and they should go wrong because of a flaw in Luke's character. Let's say they're planning on how to get him out and Luke insists he do it alone. He could say, I'm a Jedi. I could go in, use the Jedi mind trick and get Han back without anyone else getting hurt. Now, of course, Leia and Chewie are not going to agree to this. They want to go in and get Han just as much as he does. Leia could even mention her bounty hunter outfit and how she could sneak in. Luke insists on doing it alone. He goes in, but Leia sneaks in in her bounty hunter costume because that's her character. And Chewie stands nearby because that's his character. Inside the palace, Luke tries the Jedi mind trick. It doesn't work. You will bring Captain Solo and the Wookiee to me. <laughs> Jabba springs the trap door, he falls, and then Jabba uses one of those magnets, like the one that pulls the droids out of the sand, pulls his lightsaber up. So Luke's fighting the Rancor without his lightsaber, but Princess Leia, still in Bounty Hunter disguise, picks up the lightsaber. Luke defeats the Rancor, and then Jabba says, oh, you want Han Solo? Here he is. They unfreeze him and send Luke and Han to the Sarlacc pit. So on the way, we see Princess Leia pick up a comlink called Chewie, who beats them all to the Sarlacc pit. So now the battle at the Sarlacc pit, instead of R2-D2 just happen to be serving drinks and threw your lightsaber, Leia could throw it to him. And then Chewbacca pops out of the sand like a Fremen. So boom, 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 we have an awesome battle scene. We don't kill Boba Fett off in the wimpiest, stupidest way possible. And yes, I know he's not dead, but come on. You see, we still get all the cool moments, but now it's coming from a place of character and story. And I know we lose Princess Leia in the gold bikini, but as a writer, I have to choose story and character over hotness. I'm sorry. So you see how having Luke fail reveals character? It also sets up that 
the battle with Darth Vader is going to be much harder than he thought. He thought he could go in and use the Jedi mind trick on Jabba the Hutt, and that didn't work out, so what's going to happen when he faces a Dark Lord of the Sith? Now, the other problem with Jedi is story structure. Okay, this scene is called a pointer scene. Now, you see them a lot in war movies or heist movies. Yeah, there's a lot of exposition, they're an info dump, but they're necessary, and there's nothing wrong with them. In fact, there was one in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And of course, there was one in the original Star Wars. But let's look at what's wrong with this pointer scene. The pointer scene is setting up that final battle, that assault on the Death Star. In the original, it happens an hour and 39 minutes into a two hour and five minute movie. That's 25 minutes left of the movie. In Return of the Jedi, it happens 48 minutes into a two hour and 15 minute movie. You got an hour and 27 minutes left. So if we break down Return of the Jedi by acts, we have a 38 minute first act at Jabba's palace then we got about 10 minutes of Luke tying up some loose ends on Dagobah, and then an hour and 27 minute act three. I, I'm not one of those Sid Field guys who thinks plot point one has to happen at exactly page 28, the midpoint must happen at exactly page 60. But in this case, the acts are just so wonky that that's why it drags so much in the middle. So how do you restructure this? Well, I, I would do the beginning, like I said, the rescue of Han, and make that about a half hour. You could trim that down, it doesn't even do 38 minutes. Then you need an act two. So have Luke go to Dagobah to continue training. You could have your Ben Kenobi scene here, and he could talk about how he just failed, how he thought he could have beaten Jabba the Hutt on his own. Instead, he needed Leia and Chewie and Lando to come help. And this is gonna set up that battle with Darth Vader. It's gonna be so much harder than he thought. So in George Lucas's original plan, Leia was not Luke's sister. There was gonna be another character that was Luke's sister, and the third movie was going to end with them turning Darth back to the good side, but the Emperor was going to get away. And the next trilogy was going to be Luke tracking down his long lost sister, and the two of them together were going to defeat the Emperor. Instead, he decided to wrap it up with three movies and to make Leia the long lost sister, which is fine, but, if you're gonna do that, you gotta make it matter. So in this movie, they really didn't give Carrie Fisher very much to do with Princess Leia. I mean, think about how badass she was in the original. I mean, she was just a bucket of sass. What the hell are you doing? Somebody has to save our skins. Into the garbage, fly boy. I recognized your foul stench when I was brought on board. Will somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? So what I think they should have done in Act 2 when Luke's off at Dagobah, Leia and Han should have gone on another mission where they find the plans to the Death Star. The way they have it, Mon Motha just kind of announced, oh, by the way, we got these plans, many Boltons died, and it would be much better if our main characters were proactive and they did the mission that got it. And better yet, while they're doing this mission, she should be the one who discovers that she's Luke's sister and Darth's daughter. Maybe she could find a kyber crystal and have like kind of a dune water of life moment where she has a vision of the whole thing. You see what I'm saying? Like it's so much better if she figures it out rather than it's just it's dumped in her lap and we don't really do anything with it. Also, I would just completely take Boba Fett out of the Jabba the Hutt palace and have him be the problem here that they have to fight and he and Han could fight and you could kill him off in a really cool way, not accidentally bumping him into the Sarlacc pit, but that's a whole other thing. That brings us to act three. And this could be similar to the way it was in the movie, the final battle, three things going on at once. And the idea of turning the primitive Ewoks against the empire and making them the thing that they didn't see coming, that works, but you could get to it a lot quicker. The way they have it now is just so convoluted. It's like Princess Leia disappears and the rest of them get caught in the Ewoks trap. The Ewoks have them at Spears and they see C-3PO, they think he's a god, but they don't let him go and C-3PO won't impersonate a deity. Why doesn't Luke just use the force there? They don't, they take him to the Ewoks and then Princess Leia's there, you think that's gonna end it? They don't, it's just get over with. Think about Solo. 
L337 started the droid revolt, and then Chewbacca saw the Wookiee-like creatures and freed them, and they got to it much quicker, and that's what they could have done with the Ewoks. And I know Harrison Ford wanted to kill off Han Solo at the beginning of Act 3, and Lawrence Kasdan agreed, and I think it would have been a good idea. It would have given the story a little more oomph. And like George R. R. Martin says, when you kill off a character, the audience knows you're playing for keeps. So if you kill off Han Solo, you may think, oh, well, who else is going to die? It would have been better, but again, better for 13-year-olds, not for 7-year-olds. That was a choice they made, and it's okay. So yeah, that's what I would have done with Return of the Jedi. And then I would have made a spin-off trilogy about the most underrated character in Star Wars history, Nine-Nub. <laughs>